All right, welcome back to the unofficial guide to vMix. In this video, we're going to cover vMix triggers, an awesome way to trigger events to happen based on events that happen inside of vMix. Let's take a look. So triggers can be added to any input inside of vMix, and they can be triggered by events. So let's take a look at some of those and think about ways that you can use vMix triggers. So I just opened up a video file and I went to the triggers tab here and you can see I don't have any triggers set up. So we're going to do a couple together. And essentially what it does, is it's a table of triggers. So there's a trigger, there's a function, there's an input on what actually happens, a duration for the transition, the delay, and then a possible value. That would be a value for maybe changing the value of the volume, for example. And then there's a mix option that we'll take a look at. So let's imagine that a video plays. Maybe it's an intro video. In fact, now that I'm thinking about this, why don't we go ahead and choose a 10 second video that I have here for our audio video sync test, uh, which is a free tool that you'll get with this course. But let's go to triggers and let's just say on completion, when we complete this video, which is a 10 second, let's call it an intro video for your production. Let's fade to our main camera. Now we'll just say that input one is our main camera. So we're just going to go ahead and fade to that with a duration of 500, no delay, add. That is a trigger. Now let's test it. So let's zoom out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this video and on completion of this 10 second video, it should automatically trigger our input one, which would be our camera input to fade. Boom, we just did a vMix trigger. So now you can start thinking about the ways that you can use vMix triggers to further optimize and automate your video productions. So let's think about another one here. And we'll just start going through. So we've already got the on completion. When this intro video completes, we want to fade directly to a specific video. But we also have the ability to do on transition in, on transition out, on overlay in, on overlay out. The difference there is whether we're actually transitioning to the input or overlaying the input into the output screen. We also have a couple here for measuring audio meters. This is really interesting. We've used this in our podcasts to trigger cameras to move when various microphone levels hit a certain level. So essentially, you can say if this input has an audio meter, and whether it's a video or a camera, it doesn't matter. It's an audio source. It's a music file. Any f audio meter in this reaches X amount of dB, 6, 12, or 18, you can trigger something to happen. Another great one is on countdown completed. So if you have a countdown timer, you're counting down to the beginning of a live stream, or you're counting down to the end of a shot clock in a basketball game, you can trigger things to happen that way as well. So um, let's think of a good one here. I'm going to open up our lower third here, which a lot of times with lower thirds, we will... Um, overlay the lower third. So a, a good trigger for this one would be on overlay in, when we bring it into an overlay, we want something else to happen. Maybe we want to start a countdown clock. That would be an interesting one. Or maybe we want to, you know, turn an audio source on. Maybe we want to turn the audio on this input. Um, because when we know the lower third is coming on, we know that we want to unmute the microphone for our guest. There's so many ways to use vMix triggers. It's really up to you to customize and use them. So there you go. vMix triggers, that's how they work. They're inside of the inputs. The options are really limitless. So let me know if you have any questions about vMix triggers and comment below how you're using them because we'd all love to know. All right. Thanks. Let's get on to our next video.